So what is the basis of this type of string manipulation? Uh, we are going to look at a format called the grep format. And grep was one of the most important commands in a operating system called Unix, now Linux. And I, I, I don't know much about Linux. I grew up on Unix, but I suspect that there's some version of grep that's still around. And grep stands for global. This stands for regular expression. And this stands for print. Okay, so basically we want to look at a bunch of data. We want to identify pieces of the strings that match certain criteria. The criteria are given by this. The global means we want to look for this criteria through the whole file and identify every piece that matches. If the G is not there, we only identify the first occurrence. If the G is there, we identify all the occurrences. And then we, we select out or print the ones that are, match our criteria. So why would we need this? Well, it turns out that it is extremely useful, as I mentioned to you, when we have a bunch of data and we want to pick out the ones that are, meet certain criteria or meet certain conditions. Now, in order to have you understand the power of this, I'm going to show you some examples here in a minute. But the first thing I need to explain to you is we've already saw that the period was a special character which matches any character. And you might be asking yourself, well, that might be true in Java, but what about regular expressions in a different language? And one of the great things about regular expressions is, and I'm not sure what the evolution of this or how this happened, but all the languages have a common understanding of what all the special characters are. In other words, this special character that matches any character, that's not only true in Java, but it's true in any language that uses regular expressions. So it's almost as if the developers for all these languages have coordinated and agreed that this is going to mean any character, this is going to mean the beginning of the line, and this is going to mean like a range, the, the dash. So the power of this is you learn regular expressions once, right? And then no matter what language you end up using at school or at work, you can apply your knowledge in that language because the regular expression formats are all the same. You see the power of that, right? So even though I'm teaching you Java, you may go on to have a career in Python or, or some other language, but the regular expression stuff you learn here, you'll be able to reuse it no matter what language you, you have. So now I'm going to ask you to take out your computers and fire them up. And we're going to look at two websites. I'm going to ask you to open up two browser tabs, and I'm going to ask you to bring up regex1 on one of them and regex, regxr on the other one. I'm going to do the same thing over here. This is regxr. Now, when you get to regxr, uh, what I want you to do is I want you to type in, type this into the first window here so that we have all the same text as uh, getting started text here. Don't worry about this stuff up here. Just type these two sentences. That's, and what's powerful about this regxr site is that you can practice your regular expressions here. So what happens is you type in your target text here, and then you put in your regular expression up there, and it will highlight the parts that match. And that's a great way to learn regular expressions. So we're going to use that today in the background. I want to show you this other site. This other site, I don't know how I stumbled on it, but this site goes through a series of progressively more difficult regular expression exercises to teach a novice how to do regular expressions. And it's just a fantastic way to learn something. There's some fairly difficult stuff here called capture groups. And I think that is one of the main topics that we will leave for another day. So capture groups are, are more challenging. So the, here is the idea. We want to in, enter an expression that's going to match all of these expressions here. So it says you want to match this, this, and this. They are giving you some hints, some hints on how to do the exercise. And for this first thing, all they want to do is match uh, a bunch of letters. The entire idea behind learning regular expressions is learning how to manipulate all the special characters and the, and the different things that it can do with the parentheses. Those are basically the tricks that you need to learn for regular expressions. All right, so for this particular example, we see that this uh, string is being matched because there are seven characters. And here, these other two strings are not being matched because we're asking for exactly seven. But if I replace this last part here 
you can see it's going to match everything. Uh, we're going to continue with the next exercise. And here, what we want to do is we only want to match the digits. We want to match the digits. So the digits, once again, you're going to use a range, uh, which is like this. This would be one way to do it, 0 to 9. And now you can see it's matching the 1. And you can see now I've matched only the numbers. And if I want to match uh, one, two, or three occurrences, I can go like that. And these curly brackets say, how many of these do I want in a row? And here is the lower limit. Here is the upper limit. If you want it to be no upper limit, you just leave this number off. Now, I've always been disturbed by this syntax because it really looks like there's something missing here. But this basically means from 1 to infinity. The, the one I want to go over with you right now is the caret, because the caret is especially confusing, and I need to explain some things to you there. So uh, here, for example, it's looking at the any words that, uh, any sentences that begin with the capital T. Thank you, Ben, for that. And here, if I wanted to match this S over here, I could just put in this little S over here like this. Now, if I put this in over here, inside the brackets, you can see it's going to match any character that is not an S. Everything that's not an S. So the caret inside the bracket means not. Means not. So here it's not an S. Look at everything that's matched that's not an S. If I put the caret outside, here it means the beginning of line. Beginning of line. That's what that means. So that's the difference between the two carrots. Yes, sir. So it's going to be every line that does not begin with the letter S. So you can see here the L and the T will be matched because it's not doesn't begin with the letter S.